Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built Stir themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv and welcome to today's show. I decided to do something um, a little different, just try it out and see. You know, we've got almost 500 videos on this channel. Some of them are um, what I call real underperformers. You know, they're, they're things that a few people were interested in at one time, they looked at them and then that was kind of it. And a lot of those... Um, the quality wasn't really good or they were just early videos and I don't really need to keep them around so I've gotten rid of some of them from off of the page here but there's a few that I thought wow um, these are definitely some unique subjects maybe it's just the fact that it was back in the early days the first year of me making videos and the quality wasn't uh, <laughs> wasn't as good so I've decided to re-engineer one of those and try it out and see how it goes, see if you guys like it or not. And if not, then I won't do anymore. But this is a subject that uh, intrigued me. I was doing some work on the Pacific Sherman series that I have. And one of the things that kept popping up on the internet were a couple of different Shermans that have been neglected in the Pacific and are still are still there, still near these these islands in the Pacific. And you can visit them today. Now, I did the Tarawa Sherman uh, a few years ago and really enjoyed that build, but I wanted to do one of those that's still there today. I didn't want to replicate it perfectly as it is. I just wanted kind of a good representation of one of these derelict Shermans. So today we are going to look at my um, Pacific Sherman that is forlorn in the Pacific on a deserted, not a, not, not a deserted, but on a, uh, a desert isle just off the beach uh, that's been sitting there rusting for, uh, you know, a long time now, <laughs> close to 80 years. So uh, surprised there's anything left of it. So we're going to go through this build that I did several years ago, and we're going to use uh, a resin turret, a resin hull that I have done. I'll show you kind of how I did all that, the techniques I used to do my rusting on this. And that's kind of the important part is, is how to, how to do the rusting and, you know, we'll see how it goes. So stick with us folks, as we look at our rusty Pacific Sherman. Using this mold, uh, I made this about a year and a half ago and what I based it on was the M4A2 from Dragon that was the Tarawa kit and it gave me these nice um, squared off uh, whatever they call them <laughs> periscope guards um, anyway so I partially assembled the hull and used it to make this mold. Now this has produced, I want to say, seven or eight uh, castings already and some very, very nice castings. And this is what I used for the um, hull on the submerged Sherman. I didn't want to just take some nice kit and really beat it up and, and do what I did to uh, get, that, uh, get that submerged look. So using the, uh, the resin copy was really the way to go for me. What really caused me to make these molds was I wanted to do the submerged Sherman from Tarawa. And the kit that is out from uh, Verlinden, the uh, resin one that's out from Verlinden, well, it's just impossible to come by anymore. And if you can find it, it's very, very expensive. So I made the molds and I went ahead and did a partial pour in the mold. And as you can see, this is how my Tarawa Sherman turned out from those, uh, from those molds that I had made. You can see on the mantlet, it's the early style. 
And I think I've got everything on here that I want uh, to have on this particular project. So now I'm going to just give it a quick coat of primer, black. And here it is completely covered with a coat of Mission Models black primer. Once this dries, we're going to go over it with the red oxide primer that Mission Models has. And then in a few little areas, we're gonna add a little bit of OD. So anyway. Well, we're ready step. to coat the turret on this submerged Sherman. And you'll see I have a nice gloss coat. I put some uh, future on it to kind of protect the paint itself. Not that it'll need protecting with what we're going to do. But anyway. I have a solution of, well not a solution, but uh, some powdered rust and how I make that. Uh, one of my other videos, I go step by step, but pretty much it's uh, real rust. It's made with uh, steel wool and water and time. Then I have some baking soda that uh, we're going to use and of course some uh, watered down white glue. So, let's see how this turns right, out. Here we go. So, I'm going to put on a layer of this watered down white glue. And I don't want to put a whole lot on it. Um, I mean, I want to cover it well. I just don't want to gob it everywhere. I want to make sure it's watered down enough, but not too much. Enough so that it spreads well. But if I go too much, then the material I'm going to put on isn't going to stick. So, I do need to make sure I work fairly quickly as I do have a fan on and I just don't want to dry out too quickly. I did leave a few details off this in the ones that I have seen in the Pacific, or pictures of in the Pacific, I should say, I haven't actually seen them, but the ones that I have seen pictures of, uh, some of the details are missing, some of the grab handles and things. Now I did keep them on this. Uh, this particular one has lifting rings that is a little bit up higher on the, uh, uh, on the turret. good about coverage and I do I feel pretty good about the coverage and I'm not going to get all of the barrel just yet so now I'm going to start with a little uh, baking soda and the reason for this is I want it to have kind of a appearance of, of salt I look like uh, there's some crusty salt um, on this thing so I'm going to put a little bit there and there, wipe that off, and then take my rust solution, my rust solution, my rust powder, which is actual rust, and now I'm going to put it kind of all over the rest of it. Nice thing about this rust is, well, <laughs> you can't complain about the color, it's, it's rust, so it's the real thing. But it, it, does, it does add some different tones in that rust. We're going to see how this works. Uh, if I'm not happy, of course, I can put more glue on and, and, you know, try again on some areas. So, okay, there we are so far. I think we're pretty much done with the submerged Sherman. So what I did is I used my, my rust and I used uh, some of the baking soda and to enhance the colors on the rust and the baking soda, I took some pigments. Uh, we have raw sienna. Uh, Mars Red, Naples Yellow, and uh, Mars Brown, which is my favorite rust color of all. These are, were actually some pretty good colors to enhance the rust that I already had. And you can kind of see where some of those colors might have been used to kind of give us that uneven, rusty look. <clears throat> we're going to kind of turn around and look at, uh, you know, we tried to simulate some of the salt. Um, I'm actually not building this exactly how it sits in the Pacific today because, um, well, several reasons, but I just wanted it to look like it had been there for 
you know, 50 or 60 years. So, um, kind of some corrosion on it. We'll we'll build a nice diorama base and put some uh, water around it. Um, I do. I should probably put some uh, hatches on it, so I can still do that. And then, of course, I'm going to have to do something to simulate an engine down in the water, uh, but that shouldn't be too hard. So, um, anyway, here is the work on the submerged Sherman, and I uh, hope you like it. And the pigments really made a difference on how the rust looked, I think. Um, turned out pretty well. So I'm going to add the, uh, the uh, hatches here in just a few minutes. Now I need a base, and what I thought I would do is I took a uh, piece of wood from a pallet. It actually kind of looks like a piece of driftwood. And I have taped off the edge, and then I painted the base with a, a beautiful bright blue. Uh, used some acrylic gel medium by Liquitex. Actually, this is acrylic gel heavy that I put on there. And uh, then I took a brush and kind of built up around the side uh, where there was a few little gaps. And so we'll see how this looks. It should fill in quite nicely. I'm probably going to put one more layer on after this so that it's a little bit thicker uh, and, and gives us a little bit more depth. So that's going to be the next step. Uh, for the engine, what I did is I took a couple of valve covers out of a Chrysler um, because what I needed was two inline six-cylinder GMC engines uh, down inside there. And I just took these valve covers, kind of uh, uh, gummed them all up and stuck them down in there, and I think it turned out pretty good. I let that dry for a day, and then I put on a second coat to try and give it a little bit more depth, and I think I succeeded with that. Here it is, all finished up. Uh, not quite completely dry on that second coat of acrylic gel, but I've got everything glued down and uh, kind of like the way that this turned out. So thanks for watching, and that'll conclude this piece on our submerged Sherman.